Hi, I'm Dr. Gabby Cora, and we're at the National Publicity Summit here with John Raymond Takas. John, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, this is wonderful. I was just hearing a little bit about your story before. This is fascinating. You made some huge, life-changing decisions. Tell us about that. What I've done is I'm doing a book, and it's called Doing a 180 at 60. And 60 being the critical word because I turned 60 years old this year. And as a novelist, that's what I do for a living. You know, I finished a book, and honestly, I was fat and 59 and almost 60 years old. And I was like, I guess I'm old now, but I don't feel old. I feel like I'm still in my 30s. But yet, I didn't do the things I did in my 30s. And I thought, why can't I go back and redo those things? So, so what led you to that discovery? I think the very first thing was, um, it was Lent. And so, being a Christian, and not a very good Christian, by the way, and the good Lord knows I'm not being humble here, I decided I needed more C in my life. And so I gave up the seven C's. And the seven C's are, are cake and candy, cookies, crackers, chips, cheese, creams, and the creams, I love the sour cream, and the ice cream, and sweet creamy butter. I, I love butter. And I had to give all that stuff up. And it was really, um, one week into it, I realized that I was an addict. I was a heroin addict, I was a smoker, I was an alcoholic. Well, really I'm not any of those things, but I had the same thing, I was an addict. And I didn't realize how hard it was gonna to be to give those things up. I mean, if I did, then I don't know if I would have even done it. But because I was doing it for the Lord, so to speak, I said a prayer and it was answered. And uh, it, it made me really appreciate anybody that's ever gone through those really hard addictions and, and broke those up. So you were able to shed some of these things and, and leave them behind. And at the same time, walk some new paths again. What happened? Actually, it's walked old paths again because what I decided to do is redo all the high points of my life and do it all in one year. I started with this premise that, I mean, you've heard it so many times before. It says, if you don't do it when you're young, you'll never be able to do it when you're old. And I thought, that's bull. Why can't I redo it? And so I started, and I started scuba diving. And the next thing I did was I did a 200-mile bicycle ride. And one day, it's called a double century. I left at 5 o'clock in the morning, five minutes after 5. I finished at 11 o'clock at night. And I rode 203 miles. Perspective would be like from New York to Washington, D.C. in 18 hours. And um, I didn't train very well for it, okay? I mean, I did everything wrong. I did this big, long bike ride. I only trained for five weeks, but I did do it. I was just flabbergasted. That led me on to all the rest of the stuff. And this summer, I've, I've gone scuba diving. I, I did scuba diving. I did skydiving. I haven't skydived in 29 years. I went um, bungee jumping two weeks ago. I jumped off a bridge, 175 feet. I rode my motorcycle from Santa Cruz, California to Cape Cod and this summer. And that was just, I mean, that's a dream that almost everybody has. A lot of guys at least have that dream. So you change your life around. You, you're you bringing in many more healthy years ahead of you. And although you're, you're doing this at least for this year, what's going to happen after this year? That's a great question because I've already thought of that. But because going through this, I've kind of stumbled on some things I really would like to do. For instance, later this year, I have to run a half a marathon, okay, that's 13 miles. I've done that before in my life, but I always wanted to do a full marathon. So next year, maybe I can train my way through this whole thing and do the full marathon. Uh, I have a bunch of those little things on my on my bucket list, everybody calls. All these other things I've done already. I've, I've lived a really incredible, adventuresome life. And from my research that I've done, what I'm trying to do, nobody else has ever tried to do this before. And that's what's so wonderful about it. Some of, of this seems as a, a repeat from before, but with a totally different mindset. You know, the first time that you may have uh, skydived may be so different from now. Now you're doing it so consciously. So consciously. Just like, believe it or not, one of the things is playing golf. Well, I live across the street from the golf course, but I've always wanted to play 100 rounds of golf in a year because I always said if I did, I'd be a really good golfer. Well, right now I have 87 rounds in through this year. I'll have my 100 in. But what's the really kind of critical, funny part about this whole thing is they always say as you get older, then you decrease your ability. I had my best round of golf ever this year, last year. I shot one over par. 
I've never done that before. I mean, so here I am 60 and it's getting better, not worse. And it will continue to improve. Jen, how can people reach you? They can reach me probably the best way is through my fiction website, which is thetakeus.com. And it's the T A K E U S dot com. That's the best way to get me right now. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your lessons learned and your exciting next part of your life. Thank you for having me. <laughs> my pleasure.